you'll see up top that the recording screen is starting and I'm going to share my screen as we begin our math journey. So welcome, uh, my name is Tracy Matozo and I'm the principal here at Haddonfield Middle School. And this is probably the second major production that we've done uh, through the virtual lens. Um, because of COVID, we're unable to get together. We prefer getting together. We like, like seeing our families. We had the chance to catch up with some of our families at the beginning you know, of the session because we don't see everyone regularly. This is an opportunity for us to share um, our programming and the things that we've been doing and will be doing with your children. And it's an opportunity for you to get to know us as well. While the overarching uh, vision for the program is really directed to assist our elementary um, fifth graders transitioning into sixth grade, whether it's your first or last or middle or only, or you forget how many kids you have sometimes because it feels like you have a thousand. Um, the evening is really meant to provide you with information so that you can make informed decisions specifically about the math journey. At seven this evening, we'll give you an introduction to our faculty, to our programming, to our sixth grade leader, and to our other departmental facilitators. I will ask Dr. Russo to briefly introduce herself, and then we're gonna get started with the middle school math journey. Karen, it's up to you. Okay, I'm Karen Russo, assistant principal at HMS. Very proud of our staff and our students and our families. Uh, I believe this is my fourth year. I started a few months after Tracy and I feel like um, we've really been reshaping uh, our program of math studies as well as everything else to make sure that we're 21st century and that our kids are enjoying uh, where they're sitting and who their teachers are. Thanks, Karen. So why why a math journey? So unlike most of our other subjects that have a very linear progression, math builds on itself in a little bit of a different way. Uh, my understanding after being an educator for 25 years, there are different options within math based upon skill set, interest, and accessibility. All of our courses are accessible to all students. Uh, for the most part, some of our students who have access to classified math um, programs are based upon their individual education plans, but we want to make sure that our families have an overarching view of what the paths are along this journey. When students are in elementary school, for the most part, they are in a math class, uh, varying degrees of levels within the class in terms of student interest and skill. And when our families have the opportunity to make decisions about math, Lots of times there's this concept of an end goal, and that end goal varies for multiple students based upon, again, their interests and their skill and kinds of the fields that they envision for themselves. So the path where our students start in middle school can lead to very different places, and all journeys are not the same. I can speak for myself as a former English teacher. Math is not my strength. I don't particularly like math, and I need to be in a, in a math track that is tailored to my needs, and we're going to highlight what that math track might look like. The opposite of that would be a Miss Resnick and a Miss Jellick and people who are interested and who have a strength in mathematical reasoning and problem solving, and their journey looks different, and we have courses and a path for those students. Then we have another path where it kind of doesn't look the same because it's not necessarily linear. And what's important to us is that our families understand that there is a process in place for math recommendations from fifth grade into sixth grade, from sixth into seventh, from seventh to eighth, from eighth to high school, and that that process is consistent based on not just standardized assessment and not just uh, grades and numerical figures, but also interest, desire, and again, those end goals. So the philosophy really of math at the middle school is to take into consideration what our families have shared with us in terms of what it is that they want to know with regard to math programming. So back, I think in October, we sampled our fifth grade family specifically and asked them questions so that we knew how to tailor this evening's presentation. And as you can see from the 68 responses, 
of the families who um, responded at this time, again, everyone has a different kind of interest or question as it relates to math, whether it's how fifth grade math programming transitions or articulates into sixth grade. What's the difference between accelerated math and non-accelerated math? What does it look like for a special education student? Uh, how is a math intervention program in, interjected into our curriculum so that students maybe like me who might struggle with math get the extra help? And then we have students who are gifted in math. What does their programming look like? So unlike our other courses, which again, build upon each other much like math, the, the skill set and the interest and the availability also dictates that journey for your children. So I'm going to turn it over momentarily to Mrs. Jellick, who is our math facilitator, and to Mrs. Daria Resnick, who's one of our math teachers. But our philosophy is ground in skills and growth and planning for the future. Most students coming from the K-5 to program, which is consistent and similar in Tatum and Lizzie Haddon and in Central School, all of our fifth grade teachers have been working with myself and with Dr. Russo uh, to make recommendations. Those recommendations are based, as you can see, on in-house test scores, formative assessment scores, summative or cumulative big assessments. In uh, elementary school, there are trimesters and there's a standards mastery. Whether or not a student has achieved mastery or is progressing towards mastery, the fifth grade math teachers take the totality of a child's fifth grade experience in addition to what's happened in third and fourth grade to make informed decisions or a recommendation for your children. You will have the opportunity, families, in fifth grade and certainly in sixth and seventh grade, because I know some of our other families are here, you'll see the uh, teacher recommendation between February 1st and February 5th when we open Genesis, and that's part of the program uh, later on, where you can see what the recommendation is. You'll have the opportunity, if you so choose, to ask your uh, present math teacher questions, and then we generate our courses for your children based upon those recommendations as well as your own. So I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Jellig, who's going to introduce herself and speak a little bit about math. Ms. Jellig, it's up to you. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Julie Jellig. I am currently a math teacher at the middle school, and I am also the mathematics facilitator for the middle school this current school year. I have um, been able to teach all levels of math throughout my career. I have been at Henfield Middle School. Uh, this is my eighth year. I thoroughly enjoy these um, middle level grades, although people warned me about them. I still ended up there and I'm still enjoying it. Um, I do believe that our math program has definitely um, grown and changed over the years. Um, if anyone has older students, you may you know, see something totally different than what you've ever seen before. We have recently added the Accelerated Math 6. I would say that's our most recent addition. And now we are currently able to house the geometry students in the middle school rather than send them to the high school. So some things that you were familiar with before uh, definitely might be different. So thank you for attending tonight. Um, what I would like to say about the program is that yes, there is a place for everyone and I would say that after three years at the middle school, in whatever math classes are deemed, you know, the right place for your child, they will definitely come out um, ready and successful for their next endeavor. Thank you, Ms. Jellick. So I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Resnick to introduce herself and her role as the geometry teacher and an overview about, like Ms. Jellick, her experience as a math teacher in the middle school as well. Hi, good evening. Um, as uh, yeah, uh, Ms. Patosa said, I'm Daria Resnick. Um, I currently teach uh, the Accelerated Geometry and Accelerated Algebra 1, um, eighth grade. There are some seventh graders and six, few sixth grade students in that class uh, as well. Um, so I guess with that being said, looking at this document, um, I, and I know Ms. Patosa had said to post questions in the chat, so that might be where they come from, um, but to just know that it's, 
I don't, I don't think, I don't want to use the word fluid, but I don't, um, a question that, that you might ask is if your student doesn't start on the accelerated track in sixth grade, is that just, you know, nix any option to move on that track ever? And the answer to that is no. Um, so th there's always options to move within um, the levels. Um, and then as you get to high school, the, uh, once, you're, once your child's in eighth grade, you'll have a high school um, night, very similar to this. Um, Ms. Matoza, you actually probably know a lot more about that than I do, but that can then answer all your questions about the high school. And I know that, you know, there might be questions. Sixth grade, it seems like, oh, why would I, you know, worry about junior and senior year? But if you, if you are thinking about that, um, you know, along the way, there's always going to be resources. Uh, Ms. Schellig, myself, Ms. Matozo, Dr. Russo, your child's current math teacher. Uh, there's always going to be resources to ask questions and get those answers. Um, and I'm going backwards because I didn't introduce myself, Ms. Matozo, in terms of um, it's my 11th year at Haddonfield. And uh, that, that my 11th year at Haddonfield, that's a lot of years. Um, yeah, and I taught special education for five years, um, mathematics and then moved to general education um, after I got my master's degree in teaching and learning mathematics. So when Ms. Matoza said that Ms. Jellig and I are math people, she wasn't joking. <laughs> and we love to talk math and answer math questions, so feel free to reach out um, anytime as questions arise. I know that there's a lot going on right now in our lives, so you know, questions might come down the road and we are happy to answer them. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Resnick and uh, Ms. Jellick as well. So if you take a look um, at what's here, families, there's a standard program or a traditional math track, if you will, math six, math seven, math eight, and then entry into high school in most math programs in most public schools in the state of New Jersey. It is traditional. I'm not saying that it's right or it's wrong. Um, it's just traditional that high school students start with algebra. Algebra and most courses come in two flavors. Accelerated, where it's the standard course that moves more quickly. There's more depth in addition to breadth. All of the standards are covered. All of the expectations for problem solving, math facts, uh, math in the real world, and math applications are covered, but students who are in an accelerated math program or an accelerated math course move more quickly through some of the basic tenets of the class so that they're doing more projects, more analyses of um, numbers and number sense because it's assumed and expected that math facts have been mastered and that mastery of the basics has occurred in order to enter into that accelerated program. So if a student enters math six, about this time next year, your child's math teacher might say, hey, Ms. Resnick has really developed as a learner. She's mastered those math facts. And when considering what accelerated math seven looks like, it may be appropriate for her to consider with her family accelerated math seven. Conversely, a student who may start in the accelerated math six class may struggle for whatever reason and sometimes struggle is fine. There's nothing wrong with struggling because that's how you learn. Um, but when that struggle impedes your ability to access your education and make progress, then we move those students or recommend those students for the non-accelerated accelerated math course. It's important to understand that an accelerated course is the same course that moves a little faster. They're not different classes. They don't explore different things because all of our courses as a public school have to be uh, aligned with the New Jersey state standards. And in mathematics, we were able to offer a math, an accelerated math six class beginning last year because we felt that our population, our demographic, our interest in the higher level maths needed to begin sooner for students, not me, um, and maybe not many of you on the screen who were looking to land in multivariable calculus by the time they're seniors. Again, that's not a typical trajectory. A typical math trajectory is 
algebra, geometry, algebra two, and uh, pre-calc. And in order for the high school options and the high school journey to look a certain way, the middle school journey has to be laid out in the menu that you see before you. So a, a standard or typical program, the accelerated program, our gifted math program, which is based upon um, the scores that students earn within their SAGES test and whether or not they're um, identified as a gifted learner in this particular pathway. And then if you take a look, there are other pathways. So the menu, as Ms. Resnick, I'll use her word, um, fluid, it's also individualized and tailored to the needs of specific students, students' interests, students' needs, and, and you know, parents have their input in that as well. So it's important to really just see what all of the options are so that no family ever feels, A, that we're not being transparent, or B, that you don't know what those options are. In the program of studies, which we have been sending out, which will again be linked to this evening's program, which we'll send out tomorrow, the program of studies will define each of these classes, Math 6 and Accelerated Math 6, Math 7, Accelerated Math 7, and Accelerated Algebra 1. Uh, similarly with Accelerated Geometry, those are not or the accelerated geometry is, is not the typical pathway for a middle school student. It's more typical in Haddonfield for students to start their math journey in high school in geometry and land um, at the fourth year of math in some level of calculus. And again, within the high school program, there are opportunities to move up through those um, programs as well. So again, there's a recommendation process that's based upon um, consistent across the elementary schools and within the middle school. I think that's important to know is that all math teachers in each of the three elementary schools coupled with um, the recommendation process within the middle school itself, the whole process is consistent. We have a philosophy where we need to make informed decisions using the data we have accessible to us at the same time knowing that there is a human component, not just a numerical component to what those decisions are in the recommendation process, which is why we will invite our families to make recommendations um, in Genesis. And we'll look at what those directions look like uh, probably within the hour, but that the process is consistent from five really through 11th grade um, moving into the high school. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and give our families just kind of like a moment to process because that's a lot of information. So again, for our families moving from fifth grade into sixth grade, for the past two weeks, your child's fifth grade teacher has been working with the parameters that we've been sharing and that we've sent home as well so that we're completely transparent in the process. Teachers made recommendations in Genesis. Families will see those recommendations in Genesis next week. Families will have the opportunity to make their recommendations in Genesis. And then from that point forward, um, we'll have conversations. We might have individual meets. We might talk some more in the summer about questions about math or understanding math or, well, if my child starts here but wants to be an engineer, what should they do? All those kinds of things we start to work out over the next four or five months that will lead into a very successful start for your children in middle school. For those of our families who are here who already have kids in the middle school, same deal. Your teachers made recommendations for math um, for your children for next year's math class. You'll go in and you'll have the opportunity next week to make those recommendations as well. You'll see what the, the teachers have recommended. And then from there, we have conversations with our families, with our counselors, and we take a look at what, um, if there are any discrepancies between what a parent is choosing versus what a teacher selected, and if we need to reach out and have individual meetings. So it is an inclusive process uh, with myself, with Dr. Russo, need be with your child's current teacher or future teacher when taking a, a look at math placement. 
And again, the overview is important so that you can see all of the different pathways um, that your child may take through their journey through math. So with that, take a moment and please, if you have any questions, pose them in the chat so that Dr. Russo and I can extract those questions. And then we'll know that we need to put in um, some time into additional information or perhaps even another evening or a focus group specific to math because we want to make sure that this is as clear as possible especially for our fifth grade teachers or fifth grade families because for many of you if this is your first child through middle school or the first opportunity where you're like oh my god i have to go into genesis and people are making recommendations and what does that mean it just means that that's what your child's teacher sees in this moment based on some criteria knowing what it is that we have to offer in our middle school and how we proceed forward with developing your child's individual student schedule for entering middle school. Which is much more exciting to say your child graduating from high school, like mine will be in four months when I'm like a basket case. So this is a nice way to remind myself how exciting middle school is. So with that, again, any questions, put them in the chat, and then we're gonna take like a three minute break, and then we will come back for our uh, full program, which introduces us all over again, but really is a focus on um, the whole of the middle school, our staff and our programming. So now might also be a good time to go get a drink, freshen up, and then we'll be back. I feel like we should have had some kind of commercial, like some, some kind of commercial between the math overview and now this. Sorry, families, I wasn't thinking quickly. I'm sure there's plenty of kids that would have loved to do that. I know that I see some kids on here. We should make them sing. Yes. Put them on the spot. Yes. And now we have hiding children behind that. Yep. <laughs> Hello. I see you hiding. Duck and cover. I think you should sing. Miss Papa, did my keys work? 
You're muted. It's okay. Thank you families for joining us tonight. We're gonna to give it a few more minutes before we get started. And again, please don't hesitate to put any questions or concerns you may have in the chat. Dr. Russo and I are able to save the questions that are in the chat as a separate file. And she and I will be working on a Q and A to send out as well. We'll get started in a couple of minutes. How did you switch it then? You just went. It's also nice to put faces to some of the emails because some of the sixth grade families I haven't met yet in person anyway. So it's nice to see like faces and last names. Hi, Ms. Pisanek. We'll plug Inkwood uh, while we're here. So here's like a commercial. Uh, the Haddonfield Middle School PTA in conjunction with Inkwood is running um, our book fair through Inkwood. So we're super excited about that. So next week, um, an information will be coming out to our middle school families about um, opportunities to go into the store to order order online. Um, I'll be there <laughs> autographing kids books and giving out snacks one night, except now it's supposed to blizzard, so maybe not. Um, but we are looking to have a local um, book fair through Inkwood that we're super excited about. More information will be forthcoming there. Uh, February 24th, again, our PTA has really worked to find opportunities for our students um, to share in some way uh, a spirit of connection through the middle school. So from 7 to 7.45 on February 24th, and families will receive information for uh, registering. We're going to do a virtual trivia and game night, which will also include an in-house scavenger hunt. I have no control over what they're asking for kids to like put together or kind of share, but we're gonna look to see if we can also host a staff team, um, but it'll be a nice event for our students to also, you know, get to know each other and play through um, the computer. But our PTA has really been working as much as possible to try to find ways to bring the kids together. So we are excited about that. Um, in the fall at back to school night in whatever capacity it may look, um, we will share more information about getting involved with the PTA because I can't see all eight pages of families. I can see Amy Submarinian, who has served uh, as a member of the PTA, and our uh, families work diligently with us to make sure that we're able to provide um, 
access to resources for our staff as well as students. So hopefully you'll get involved with our PTA. Uh, the misnomer tends to be that in middle school, you know, it's like hands off and drop your kid off and go away for three years. Um, and we don't operate like that. We work in partnership with our families. We need your support and you need ours and so do your children. So we all work together and our PTA is a special, very special part of that. So with that, I'm going to open uh, Welcome to our Haddonfield Middle School curriculum evening. While this evening is meant to provide our uh, fifth grade families with lots of information about our middle school, we invited all members of our community to join us. We were not able to have a traditional back to school night event. We haven't had the opportunity to work in partnership physically with our families. We missed that connection and we wanted to have the opportunity to showcase and share what it is that we do uh, for three full years with your children. When you drop them off or kick them out of their car or when they get off of their bike or their scooter and they come into our building, uh, they are very different human beings by the time eighth grade rolls around. Not only are they taller and their voices change and they've learned to like use deodorant and those kinds of things, um, but they, they learn now how to advocate for themselves and they understand their strengths and their areas where they need to seek some assistance or growth. They have the opportunity to start to figure out their identity. In fifth grade, they identify in their family units and then their small elementary units. And then they come into to middle school and there's more people and there's more adults. So this is an opportunity for us, for you to get to know us and to trust us that we will take care of your children the way we take care of our own that we understand what a middle level learner needs, not just academically, but socially, emotionally, psychologically, maybe even financially. Um, we wanna make sure that you're comfortable sending us your children so that when we send them back to you, um, that we're working together to create this whole person. And it is, it is very exciting. So as the principal, I am proud to be ready to share my screen. And not just again, fifth grade parent night, but welcome to all families who are able to give up some of their time to be here. Uh, each element of middle school always has its own sort of identity. Sixth grade, our students come into us and they're really learning how to navigate a building and navigate different facets of it. And I cannot express enough, especially if you are a parent or guardian or neighbor of a sixth grader, our kids have functioned exclusively through the virtual world um, in terms of getting to know us and getting to know the school and getting to know one another. And they've really done a phenomenal job. We had the benefit of being with our current seventh and eighth graders for a while. And we never really had the opportunity to physically meet the current sixth graders when they were fifth graders. And hopefully for our current fifth grade families, we will be able to meet with them in person, but they've done a phenomenal job. And it showcases really, not just the resiliency of what children can aspire to do and put in odd circumstances, but your support of them through this as well. So I am the principal, Dr. Karen Russo is our assistant principal. I'm gonna turn the program over to her momentarily. Ms. Auda Aquino will speak with you as the sixth grade uh, counselor. She'll be with your children for three years and she'll introduce herself later. Miss uh, Michelle Barringer is our school nurse. And for those of you who are essential families, you are familiar with Miss Barringer, who's amazing. Uh, my secretary is Miss Barbara Rafferty and our attendance secretary is Miss Kelly Burns. So those are you know, your office staff who you'll see in some capacity in the main office. Um, and we are always welcoming and um, we think we're fun. We play music and we do sing along sometimes. So you might be caught in a situation where hopefully you know the words to a song because if not, your kids are disappointed in you. Um, we have departmental and uh, grade level leaders as well. I am going to turn the program over to Mrs. Adrian Goldenberg, who is currently serving as our sixth grade facilitator. Mrs. Goldenberg, if you'd like to speak for a moment about sixth grade, it's you. Yes, thank you. Um, as Ms. Teresa said, I'm Adrian Goldenberg. I've been teaching 19 years at the middle school. Um, I think over my time there, I've come to realize what an amazing team of teachers that we have in all the grade levels, all the disciplines. It is an absolute 
absolutely wonderful place to work and love the, the children and the families of Haddonfield. Um, our sixth grade teachers are looking forward to welcoming your children next year. As Ms. Matoso alluded to, it's only a year of transition. Um, we, as a team, though, feel confident that we can guide your children through this, um, through the transition seamlessly. Um, it, there's a lot, I mean, this is the first time they're going to have different teachers, not one teacher or two teachers teaching the subjects. They can have, you know, three or four, and then they have their specials. So that, you know, sometimes among itself causes, like, a little bit of anxiety, but we do get them through that. So um, we are really looking forward to welcoming your children, and we're looking forward to just a year of fun and discovery. And um, I guess I'll turn it back to Ms. Fatosa. Thank you, Ms. Goldenberg. Um, I think it's also important for our families to see that we have a leadership team that is based on our grade level needs as well as our departmental needs. And we work together uh, to provide uh, a structured program for your children. And we work together collegially, professionally, and personally uh, to draw upon our collective strengths when working with your kids. Seventh grade is Mrs. Emmy Probst, who's a special education teacher. Eighth grade is represented by Mrs. Michelle Canada, also a special education teacher. And our specials uh, will be highlighted by the arts and Mrs. Geringer in a few moments, but Mrs. Sharon Vidor, who's one of our French teachers, is their leader. And all of the other facilitators who you see named tonight will have the opportunity to introduce themselves and provide an overview of their courses. So at this moment, let's kind of take a, a breath and kind of check in we are talking a lot at you. It's a lot of information and you're not expected to remember everybody's names, but just to kind of take a moment and think, you know, as a, as a parent of a child in middle school, what might be something that you really feel that you need to know or feel comfortable understanding in terms of the program at the middle school? The components of our middle school and the questions that hopefully you're considering are tied to what middle school is meant to do in terms of improving the developmental outcomes and our students are developmentally along a spectrum of interests and ideas and maturity and we strive to really meet our students where they are knowing that by the time they leave us they're really ready for uh, a much more independent situation when they're in high school. And again, working in concert with you. All of the information uh, in terms of data analysis um, and some of the other things that we do, whether we're benchmarking through LinkIt or if we're in the position to have um, standardized testing, we are working with you to provide seamless information in terms of your child's progress the things your child needs to do to make progress based upon their needs and your end goals and their end goals especially. We wanted to showcase a little bit um, of our community and if you take a look at some of the, the pictures, we wanted to make sure that we were also showing what the world has looked like for us in COVID. We have our students who picked up the painting of our beautification of our walls um, when we needed to stop last March and we walked back into a building in September that had sketches that needed to be painted from our eighth graders from last year and our students have picked up on that. Uh, we were on um, Fox 29 with Bob Kelly back in October and super proud of that experience. He's looking to kind of come back eventually and, and showcase more of the things that we do because um, we tweeted at him and we asked him to come and he came and had the opportunity to spend a lot of time with our students. And it was an exciting opportunity to be showcased on the news. You'll see our students, yes, they are um, you know on their computers working through Google, much like you are with us right now. But Halloween was still and is, you know, a, a Haddonfield thing. And we wanted to make sure that our students had that opportunity because it's something that's fun. Similar to our breast cancer walk and working with our, our staff and socially distanced appropriate means in the classroom. You know, we are practicing all the things that we expect all of our, our students to be doing. But at the same time, we are not losing who we are because Part of who we are makes your children 
unique and helps them grow along the way too. So we have been able and very much committed to fostering our community of learners and growers in our school. And that's because of our staff. These are some of the things that we look forward to doing with your children, whether they're currently in fifth grade, coming into sixth grade with different orientations and workshops, and certainly for our current sixth and seventh graders to continue supporting them emotionally. Uh, we have our first advisory tomorrow. Dr. Russo will speak a little bit about that. That's a way, again, for us to connect with our students and our staff in a, in a different way to help our students see sometimes the bigger picture beyond what it is that they're doing in their, in their class. So these are things that we will do again together. And I stole that line from Coach Delano. So if any of you have children who play football at the high school level, that's his tagline and he knows I stole it, but I need to make sure I give him credit. The mission of the Haddonfield Public School System is to work in partnership with our families and with our community to make sure that our curricula is an appropriate extension of the New Jersey learning standards while also enriching and differentiating for all of our learners. And tonight we have our departmental facilitators who've taken on a very significant role in the district to make sure that they are coordinating the programming and the content that your children explore in their class, all of which are tied to the umbrella of our philosophy on curriculum, as well as the instructional components in class. In elementary school, our students have specials. And in middle school, they have specials that have a little bit of a different name and are programmed differently. So a successful middle school creates opportunities for the arts, the physical arts, the fine and performing arts, the theater arts, and the instrumental vocal musical arts to be embedded in the actual program, in the schedule. When your children receive their schedule in Genesis in August, they will be scheduled for art or scheduled for uh, STEAM and scheduled for specific world language classes. And they take those classes cumulatively throughout the year uh, to, again, foster their growth and their understanding of who they are and the things that they like. And we've worked very diligently with our Board of Education over the past two years to grow those programs to focus not just on the fine and performing arts, but also the industrial arts and the engineering arts where kids can be builders. And to the credit of our staff in a situation that otherwise seemed very, um, difficult, they've certainly provided students with opportunities to be artists. And Ms. Geringer will speak about that uh, momentarily. And I couldn't be more proud of the things that our students have been able to do again by virtue of all the work that our staff has under, undertaken. So with that, the first opportunity that our families have to really make selections from fifth grade into sixth grade, and then certainly our families who are with us currently in sixth and seventh grade, um, happen in world languages. In elementary school, it is a Spanish only um, experience for students to get exposure to the Spanish language. But when you move into middle school, you have the opportunity to select French, German, or Spanish. That, Mrs. Sancherico, I'm going to turn it over to you. Hi, everyone. I'm Annette Santorico, and I've been teaching language arts for about 30 years now, but this is my first year. I'm very proud to represent the World Language Department as a facilitator on behalf of Madame Aguilera, Madame Verdur, and Herr Watkinson. They do an amazing job, so I'm very proud of all of them, and they're very welcoming to me, so I've had the opportunity to visit their classes and, and see the amazing things that they do to help students truly embrace the culture of the language that they teach. Um, I had a chance to Zoom it with Senorita Sanchez while they were making guacamole, and um, had a chance to um, even um, step into Madame Verdure's class uh, when she was playing music um, with the students and having them explore different artwork around the room. So they do 
wonderful things in all of the courses. Um, as Ms. Matoza already mentioned, students start out in elementary school with Spanish, but then um, they have a choice for sixth um, and seventh grade with French, German, or Spanish to prepare them for eighth grade, which is a high school level course designed to further strengthen students' knowledge of the language and culture. Um, and with that course in eighth grade, uh, students are um, achieving novice high fluency through three modes of communication. I think that's uh, down at the bottom of the slide, but interpersonal, interpretive, and presentational are the three modes of communication that they're working on. So interpersonal through speaking and conversation, spontaneous, um, interpretive, which would be um, reading and listening, as well as presentations that they have an opportunity to rehearse. Um, on this slide, um, these are just um, some of the amazing things they've done already this year. Even through hybrid learning, I've had uh, the chance, as I said, to see some of the activities that they're doing, not only to teach students about the language, but to go beyond the language to help them embrace the culture. Um, so we uh, celebrated Hispanic Heritage Month with various activities. Um, on virtual Wednesdays, students were participating in the exciting live cooking classes. Um, students uh, in French classes um, had cultural Wednesdays. They even virtually visited the Eiffel Tower, the Arc de Triomphe, and the Palace of Versailles by watching videos and then discussing those in French. Um, we are also looking forward to and have already started a digital cookbook that I had the chance to participate in. Um, my daughter-in-law, Amy, just a little side story, is from Nicaragua. And um, if students are questioning the importance of taking a foreign language, my son was one of those in middle school and high school. He was wondering why he needed Spanish. And then lo and behold, when he went to Villanova, he had an opportunity to take a service engineering trip to Nicaragua. He met uh, a best friend, a wonderful friend, who uh, invited him to be the best man at his wedding. At that wedding, he introduced my son to his wife. And they've been happily married for two years. And now, of course, my son needs to speak Spanish fluently to her and to her family. Um, so Amy and I had a chance for the... Um, the book creator digital cookbook that we're making. We made tres leche together, and um, I really enjoyed learning that recipe and learning many other recipes from Nicaragua. So we're looking forward to seeing what the students can come up with, with recipes from um, various cultures they study as well. Um, additionally, one last note, um, we are also looking at improving cultural literacy and diversity by um, finding ways to support the state mandate for LGBTQIA plus curriculum. Um, and one lesson that we designed out of several is called the power of language, where students are discussing the impact on words that we use in language and even pronouns and the impact of that as well. Uh, so I wish you luck and your children's uh, choice of French, Spanish, or German. Um, I can honestly say they can't go wrong with any of the three languages. They are in for a treat and a wonderful educational experience. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Thank you, Ms. Santrico. So families, next week, uh, when you have your opportunity to go into Genesis and um, make your language selections, in the past, families were asked to rank um, in order of in their importance, which they would prefer their child to have. We have been able to make all of um, all accommodations for language, so there's not really a need to do that. So unless we had a significantly disproportionate number of students want one language over uh, the other, there really isn't a need to do that. So you'll go in and you'll make your language selection, and then sometimes during the summer, your child might come home and be like, I really want to take German or I really want to take French uh, because it's something different than Spanish or I want to continue in Spanish. And, you know, you have those options as well. Uh, so that is an exciting experience for your children. Mrs. Vidor will be working with uh, the other language teachers to put together a, a little bit of an overview of each language that we'll be sending out to the elementary schools so that you'll have the opportunity to see a little bit about each language and have a little bit of a better understanding before you make that selection. So thank you, Ms. Sancherico. Um, I can't wait to cook out of that cookbook.
So we had our math program earlier, but I am going to briefly turn it over to uh, Mrs. Jellick again to introduce herself as the facilitator and, and her role in math uh, programming. Ms. Jellick, it's up to you now. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Julie Jellick. I am a math teacher at the middle school, currently teaching seventh and eighth grade math. And I am also the mathematics facilitator. Um, the math program slide is here for those of you that didn't join us at 630. It may look confusing, but if you look at um, you know, the options you have, obviously the standard program is a student would take math six, math seven, math eight, head to high school and start algebra one, which is very commonplace throughout the country. Um, we also were able to add in a new accelerated math six class um, based on our population. And that's another option. So you've got the accelerated math six, accelerated math seven, take the algebra one in eighth grade. So you can start geometry in middle school or high school. Um, you can see the gifted math program. And what I would like to say is that you don't have to fit into one of these programs. Um, it is very common that a student might start in math six and their teacher realizes, you know, throughout the year, there's been a lot of growth, which tends to happen in middle school. And maybe in seventh grade, they will take accelerated math seven. Uh, the same thing can happen in seventh grade if you're taking math seven. And again, that might be the year that your child flourishes and realizes that they actually like school. Um, in eighth grade, they could move up to the accelerated algebra one program. So, you know, even though you see the uh, vertical tracks there, there is definitely some flexibility. Um, so as mentioned, math teachers have gone in and made recommendations at this point of the year. Remember it's January, based on what we know about your students so far. Uh, you will see a recommendation in Genesis. And if you have any questions, the first thing to do would be to reach out to your child's math teacher and um, if you have any questions about you know, where this lands your child in high school, um, the high school has a great calculus program, um, if that's a goal, and we have a, one course at this point beyond calculus, if that is you know, someone's goal. So um, just reach out to me if you have any questions specific to the program, and um, hopefully everyone has a great night. Thank you, Mrs. Jellick. So the little emoji there, one of the bosses, and I won't name which one, pointed out that I didn't look smiley in that picture and that that might like suggest to parents that they shouldn't be happy about math. So I did try to change my emoji. There are no smiley Miss Matozo emojis in my little bitmoji person. So I did tell my one boss who shall remain nameless that it doesn't mean that I'm miserable about math and that you should be scared of it. Rather, that's all that my Bitmoji had to offer. Um, but in all honesty, if you have any questions or concerns related to math, math placements for next year, please do not hesitate to reach out to your child's math teacher. And again, as we work through um, the individualization of your child's schedule for September, we do this in concert with one another. The arts, fine, performing health and wellness. I'm going to turn it over now to Mrs. Geringer. Good evening, everyone. My name is Erica Geringer. I'm the art teacher at the middle school. I've been teaching at the middle school for, I believe this is my 13th year. And I think the fine and the performing arts are unique in the sense that we all get to see the students throughout their three years. So we really get to see their transition from sixth grade to eighth grade, which is a huge change and it's really always really nice to see. Um, so I am the facilitator for the, for the fine arts, the performing department, which includes the following um, subjects. We have physical education and health. Um, we have the art and the STEAM program, technology and music. For physical education, they have it all three years that they're in middle school. And the teachers there are Rachel Gould, uh, Lindsay Kocher and Bob Bickle. Um, so these are some of the activities that they do. They participate in activities including team and lifetime sports. And during health, they also um, cover topics like wellness, substance abuse, mental and emotional health. For art, um, I am the art teacher and we really review the elements and the principles of art 
throughout their whole time. For me, it's important for them to explore their materials. And, you know, I'll have students that come in and they're really nervous about art, or maybe they have a preconceived notion of what it is to, to, to be an artist. So my goal is to expose them to as many different types of materials so that maybe they find something that they're really interested in that they didn't know they were interested in before. Um, the STEAM teacher is Ms. Tracy Steele, and she came on last year, and she's doing a really great job. So STEAM art incorporates science, technology, engineering, art, and math. And really, the projects are about encouraging critical thinking, problem solving, and innovation, and she does a really wonderful job there. The technology teachers are Mr. Wynn and Ms. Likerish. And in sixth grade, they focus on digital citizenship, principles of engineering and construction. Throughout the other years, they'll visit um, topics like coding, and I know they do some Photoshop and some digital work there as well. Um, and for music, the two teachers are Mr. Bader and Ms. Mildren. Um, there's band and choir, and students learn about music theory, music appreciation, how to better themselves on instruments and vocals and how to work together in an ensemble. Um, I just feel that our department is kind of the soul of the school. You know, we, it's a place where kids can come and, and be themselves and express themselves. So I feel pretty privileged to teach what I teach and see them grow in that way. So that is the overview. And of course you can contact any of the teachers for any further information. Back to you, Ms. Matozo. Thank you, Ms. Geringer. So one of the things, families, that you'll see when we send out at the top, there are some things that are linked. Um, the video production class with Mrs. Steele, our sixth graders put together a public service announcement specific to wearing a mask. We shared it out internally within the middle school through our YouTube channel. Um, similarly, with the band, choir, and orchestra, our teachers last year for uh, transition put together a really brief video to highlight the work that they do with our students. And most of the work is accessible on our YouTube channel because we're proud of the work that our students do. And we wanna make sure that they have the opportunity to showcase, uh, particularly in areas which right now have been a little complicated. We haven't been able to have concerts and um, our theater, you know, musical theater program and drama club and those kinds of things are really impacted by some of the things that we can only do so much through with uh, computer recording and engineering. So um, please know that we want to make sure that we're able to showcase our students and all of the things um, where they're successful, including the arts. Science, Ms. Pisanic, it is your turn and I'm turning it over to you. Hi. Well, hi everyone. I'm Lauren Pisanic. Uh, I serve as our science facilitator here at the middle school, uh, and I'm also one of the sixth grade science teachers. So over the past several years, we've been transitioning here at HMS to a three-year integrated standards program. Uh, what that means is that in each grade, your child will explore science phenomena that build understanding across Earth, life, and physical sciences. Um, it's a shift away from just having Earth one year, life a different year, and physical science a um, third year. So middle school science might look quite a bit different than you remember it. Um, we take a three-dimensional instruction approach now, which means that not only will students learn those core um, key science ideas, the content, but there's equal emphasis that's placed on students actually engaging in science and engineering practices and thinking about science through a lens of concepts that really cuts across all disciplines. So concepts like um, stability and change or scale or structure and function. So one way sometimes that we can think about that shift or we call it, we say we're moving away from just learning about and moving towards figuring out. So at HMS to do this, we use the open science instructional model, which follows a storyline approach. So what that means or what that looks like for our students is that we start each unit of study with an anchoring phenomenon. So something puzzling or something thought provoking. So we, we might watch um, news clips about extreme droughts and floods in different communities or 
we might read about an earthquake that caused Mount Everest to move backward. Um, or we might think about like how our phone sometimes breaks when we drop it the wrong way. So students develop questions around these phenomena. And this is what really drives our investigations forward in science. So it motivates our, um, our learning. Uh, so students will engage daily with these science and engineering practices. So they're developing and using models. They are meeting in scientist circles um, in this picture in person right now, virtually to have these discussions where they argue from evidence um, with the goal of working together to really build their understanding of these key science concepts that are needed to explain the phenomena. Um, so just like Erica um, Geringer just said about the arts, I, I also feel really truly grateful to be part of our science department and the work we're doing in science right now in middle school. And we look forward to, well, we're grateful to work with the students um, that we have right now and we're looking forward to our new incoming sixth graders. Thanks, Ms. Matozo. Thank you, Ms. Pisanek. Um, it's especially exciting for our current sixth graders going into seventh grade. One of their units is focusing on the chemical reactions involved in bath bombs. And that happens right around the holiday season. So families, you know, if all of a sudden your kids are coming home with like these clunky bath bombs and they're like, oh, look what I made you. They made it in science class. And we always tease the kids that the bath bombs make great um, presents. But it's nice to, because we, the, our students are doing hands-on experimentation and really taking the time to think through the process and developing a hypothesis and testing it. Um, and that skill builds on each other and then they're able to apply it in other settings. And Ms. Pisanek has really uh, been the driving force behind that. So we're equally lucky to have her with us. Social studies, I'm going to turn this over to Mrs. Karen Izzo, who is our social studies facilitator. Hi, good evening. My name is Karen Izzo. I um, am an eighth grade social studies teacher um, at Haddonfield Middle School for 22 years. This is my 22nd year. Um, and I, I am also the social studies facilitator for the middle school. And I'm also the um, after school drama program director, which as Ms. Matozo mentioned earlier is, is is suffering in this pandemic, but we cannot wait to be back on the stage. We had drama club this afternoon and everyone was like, God, when can we go back? So we're practicing, just not on the stage. Um, in social studies, um, the, the programs do kind of mesh together, even though it, it might not seem like they do. Um, and, I, and I apologize, I didn't put the teacher's names on my slides. I'm realizing as I see everyone else's slides, um, the sixth grade social studies teachers are Mrs. McComas and Mrs. Black. And in sixth grade, um, the, the, the point of social studies really is to study our society, right? What makes a society function or not function? And how do we as individuals interact in that society? Um, in the sixth grade, they focus on ancient civilizations. And um, I don't know about you, but I really remember my ancient civilizations classes when I was in, in middle school. Um, I can still tell you about Sumer, Mesopotamia, India, um, ancient Egypt. And then in, in Haddonfield, they also study ancient um, China and, and Greece and Rome. And they examine these civilizations through um, different lenses. So they look at each civilization through geography or religion, different achievements, the political structure, the economic structure, and then the social structure. And seventh grade is, is very similar. So I didn't write that it's called grapes. I didn't write that grapes thing again because they do a similar kind of approach um, in seventh grade. In seventh grade, the teachers are Mr. Proboznak and Mr. Maxson. Um, and they kind of take off historically where, seventh, where sixth grade leaves off. Um, they leave off kind of with the fall of Rome. And then seventh grade looks at medieval time periods around the world in uh, Europe, Africa, Middle East, and Asia, and the Americas. And they use that same, um, grapes lenses of geography, religion, achievements, politics, economics, and social structure. In eighth grade, we take a little bit of a deviation from the, the global. So those, those two um, classes are more globally focused in ancient history. And in eighth grade is a, is a civics course on um, American democracy. Um, 
this year's classes are really steeped in current events of, of the day. Um, they are pretty much like coming right off of the page into their computer screen, unfortunately. But like stuff that's currently happening is stuff that they are studying. We, we study um, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, trying to answer um, the question, what does it mean to be a citizen in our democracy? Um, and we examine these, we use a similar approach, but we don't use geography, religion, and achievements, but we look at different um, social, political, and cultural events um, through different lenses of different um, historical groups throughout, um, throughout history. So we might be looking at immigration from a political perspective, from a social perspective, or, or from an individual perspective. And then we look at some of these different historical um, time periods and how, how did the Constitution kind of deal with um, these groups that have been historically um, kind of excluded from we the people. And so um, eighth grade, or eighth grade is, a, is a really important class as students learn to, to be functioning members of our, our, our society. Um, so like everyone else, I think social studies is pretty much the awesome place to be in our school. Um, but I actually think middle school um, is amazing. I've, I've, I've done my whole career in middle school education. And I really think when people, I tell people that are outside education, like, oh, I'm a middle school teacher. And they're like, oh my God, how could you teach that? I remember I was so terrible in eighth grade. I was like, yeah, but they do the funniest things and it gets you through the hardest days. So even this year when it's really been trying, I feel like middle school, there's something special about the middle school. So, um, Back to you, Mrs. Matozo, and thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Izzo. Um, middle school is where it's at. That's what I tell everybody. And I will let our families kind of discover that. I think sometimes the mantra in the past has been, you know, get them through middle school because like get them to high school and it's where it counts and all these other things. But middle school is such a fun place to be because everyone's in this kind of like phase where it's just a little trial and error and it's exciting and all that kind of stuff and we're incredibly lucky to be able to be there um, with your children to experience that. Following social studies, I'm going to turn it over uh, to our special education uh, facilitator, Mrs. Diana Jamelody. Ms. Jamelody, you're up. Good evening, family. So my name is Diana Jamelody and I am the special education facilitator at the middle school. I am also the sixth through eighth grade resource room teacher for reading and for math. Um, so just like everyone else has mentioned, um, we're at the middle school here. We're committed to providing your children with a continuum of services that addresses all of their needs. Um, with whatever it is that they, they may have. The intent of our special education department is to make sure that your children's needs are being met. Um, we do so with a variety of programs that we offer. Uh, we have different types of class with different types of support, such as um, in class support, we have two different levels of resource classes. Um, and we even have a really specialized reading program um, that is tier based. Um, and a fun little tidbit too, we do offer a community-based instruction program, um, which previously, sadly not this year, uh, we have had and run a wonderful coffee cart. So I think we're all kind of having our fingers crossed that that will come back shortly because the students did such a wonderful job and really, really enjoyed it, as well as staff. Um, in addition to the programs that we offer, uh, we also provide related services such as speech and language therapies, occupational therapy, physical therapy, behavioral supports, and counseling services. And the nice part is that we all work together um, as a team. We have a very nice, strong bond. So everyone's kind of on the same page and, and working on the same things in the same levels. So um, again, if you have any questions, um, you are able to reach out to me or anyone else. I did not list the special education teachers because there are several and we kind of all um, play various roles. Um, but please feel free to reach out to me with any specific questions. Um, I will be happy to answer anything as well as Mrs. Matozo. So, all right, back to you. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mrs. Jamaldi. So our CBI class, our community-based instruction class, had the opportunity uh, to meet Bob Kelly and uh, we, they had a news segment. Um, it was important for our students to make sure that everyone understands that we are an inclusive environment and that all members of our community are participants in the things that we do. And we're proud of all of our students and all the things that they are able to contribute to our community. So for families who are concerned about course selection uh, when compared with what happens with an annual review, please keep in mind that the course selection process will assist in the annual review process and whatever is decided at the annual review and uh, cemented within the IEP uh, or even a 504 plan uh, for your child if they you know require additional supports in whatever capacity all of those things are reviewed in the spring and taken into consideration when we build your child's schedule so one doesn't change or um, impact the other or negate the other rather uh, the course selection process is an opportunity for our families to see what is available to them and then those decisions are made with the team at the annual review and again as mrs jamaldi said never uh, hesitate to reach out to your case manager or to your child's teacher to ask those questions um, because it's important that we make sure that all of our families have all the information that they need to make decisions for middle school with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Tina Papa, who is our English language arts facilitator. Okay, so she's saving the best for last. Um, my name is Tina Papa. Um, I've been at the middle school. This is my 19th year teaching um, English. And I also, for my first five years, I taught sixth grade. So I do have the experience of, um, you know, knowing what the kids are coming in as. And now currently as an eighth grade teacher, I kind of see this process go and flourish and then they take it with them to the middle, uh, high school. So on the screen there we talk about reading and writing and discussion and presentation and cooperative learning and creativity all while we are studying all the different novels and short stories, informational text, poetry because ultimately we're trying to prepare your um, children for career and college readiness but also we know how important the New Jersey State testing is uh, which Ms. Matozo mentioned before about the Lincoln benchmark we work with that, we use the data, and the data drives our instruction for that so that they can be completely prepared for the state testing. The themes um, that the sixth grade start with would be the hero's journey. And they start sixth grade by researching a current CNN hero uh, for the, whatever school year that they're in. So, you know, 2021, they'll start with a current hero. And they um, get introduced on the expectations of writing as a middle schooler. So there are, you know, there are many lessons and graphic organizers and rubrics and peer editing and conferencing. And it kind of lays the foundation for what they do in seventh grade. And seventh grade is the theme of belonging to a family, community, and society. And Ms. Matozo also mentioned that when, you know, they're, they're coming in and they're trying to leave their little family pods and coming and trying to find themselves in, high, in middle school. Seventh grade also uh, writes the research paper where they learn uh, the components of the research paper, MLA format, all of that good stuff. And then in eighth grade, they have the opportunity to explore the theme of identity. We write an analytical paragraph called the direct reference paragraph, which we really kind of hit the components and the points home in eighth grade so that when they go to high school, they have the really good base to write a really good five paragraph analytical essay, which if you remember, um, you know, you'll use that for the rest of your life, basically, analyzing quotes um, into college. Um, we also have the uh, opportunity to kind of like math in one sense, there is an accelerated program where they still do the same concepts of identity, you still get the same writing and literary devices, but it's a faster pace. Um, we end up doing a couple extra novels in there and the students that are interested in the accelerated program more likely would take the accelerated nine in high school. Um, but unlike, kind of almost unlike math in one sense, language arts and the English is not a building block. So if they take ELA eight in eighth grade, they can still take accelerated in ninth or they can kind of switch back and forth. So it's not, you're in a track in one sense. You can kind of move to where um, either a teacher recommendation or like if parents and students decide that they would like to kind of further their English experience. 
Uh, so you can reach out to me if you have any questions uh, with that. I also didn't list the teachers because people are doubling up and teaching different grades. Um, but, you know, we're really happy to have the kids in school. It's really nice seeing them. And, um, you know, even with all their, our trying times right now, it, it's, it's still working. So the kids, you know, are flourishing and doing what they need to do to be ready for the future. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Matozo. Thank you, Ms. Papa. So with that, I, I saved the English for last because I was an English teacher. So that's where Ms. Papa gets that from. I'm gonna uh, turn this over uh, momentarily to uh, Ms. Auda Aquino. Ms. Aquino is one of three counselors and she is specifically the counselor for the outgoing eighth graders and the incoming sixth graders and we'll spend three years with them. Ms. Aquino, if you would like to take over. Yes, hi. Hopefully everyone can hear me. I'm having some audio issues lately today. Um, so basically I'm Miss Aquino or I'm Auda Aquino. Um, I will be the school counselor for the incoming sixth graders. Um, I, my role is to pretty much um, support my students academically. Um, of course, in partnership with teachers and parents and administrators um, and to also advocate for their well-being. So um, a large part of what I do in sixth grade um, when they're in sixth grade is to really establish that strong relationship with them so that they know who I am <laughs> and they feel comfortable talking to me um, to really create visibility. So you might um, hear some of your children saying, oh, I saw Miss Aquino in the cafeteria because I'm in their lunch and I'm in the hallways. I, you know, visit their classrooms. So I really try during their first year for them to know who I am and not just the lady in the office. <laughs> so uh, that's a large part of what I do uh, during their sixth grade year. Another thing is really um, communicate with my students collectively on what supports they have in school, um, to know who they can talk to, um, problem solve. That's a big thing in um, sixth grade. So really that's my main role. Um, it's my 12th year here at HMS. And just like what Ms. Matozo said, I get to see them through their three year duration. So I get them in sixth grade, seventh grade and eighth grade. Then I help get them through to high school. So it's, it's really nice. I really get to know them and, and you all and their families. So it's, it's exciting. If there is anything that I could do um, during the three years that I have them, please. I love to collaborate with parents, so please let me know. Um, and I think that is it. Thank, Thank you, Ms. everyone. Aquino. And Ms. Aquino will work um, a little bit more specifically with your children during the different orientations that we have so that she can begin to get to know them and certainly get to know mm -hmm. you as well. With that, Dr. Russo, I'm gonna turn this part over to you so you can speak briefly about uh, the next two slides. Just tell me when to click and move through for yourself. Okay, great. Uh, Karen Russo here. This is uh, my 17th year in education and my four, almost my full fourth year at HMS. Um, hopefully some of you are familiar with me. I've worked with your students in many different facets. Um, just to kind of give an overview of my role. Um, I'm in classrooms. I eat lunch with the kids. Um, they laugh at me when I try to play basketball at recess. Um, I have shared tissues and chocolates in my office when kids have had tough days um, because we ourselves have tough days as well. Um, I run 504 meetings, IRNS meetings, and gifted and talented meetings. I help students with um, technology, which I'm going to talk to um, in a minute about. I help organize kids, you name it. Um, I love my job. I love kids. That's why. I actually will put parents and teachers um if i have meetings and there's a there's a kid that needs me they know that i'm going to take the kid first um because that's just who i am um i i value my job and i don't see it as a job i really feel as though um i'm going to school so i tell my one and one and one and a half year old and four year old mommy's going to school because i want to see my other kids um, so with that being said, um, you know, technology has been really important with COVID and there's some great things that we want to keep. Um, you know, our teachers were lucky have been well versed in Google Classroom since Tracy and I started four years ago. Um, we have consistent ways of how students get their assignments. We call it like an all in one. They could find resources. 
um, this current year, and I said to Tracy, I don't know why we didn't think of it before, um, we have a, a Matozo Russo Google Classroom. So we post schedules, we post surveys, um, you name it. And the kids are great. They'll go in during their study hall and they'll check it out. Um, and so uh, your students will receive a Chromebook at sixth grade through eighth grade. Um, you know, we'll kind of nudge you uh, about uh, opting into an insurance plan because things happen with technology, right? It happens with our own phones. Um, we love to tweet out, Tracy and I, when we're in the classrooms and outside in the hallways. Um, so right now, you know, if you want to check out our Twitter and our um, main website page, um, our student, our teachers um, use lots of different uh, tech apps to keep our students engaged, um, such as Newzella, um, Actively Learn, IXL, Nearpod. Um, we have like crash tutorials that our teachers gave in the beginning of the year that um, we sent out to our, our parents. And the nice thing is we have Clever this year, so the kids can't go home and say, I don't know the password, I can't get in. Oh, just go into Clever, it's all there. Even your online textbook for some of your classes. So we have come a long way, um, I feel, as our, our school and our district uh, with Google Classroom and technology. Um, and as I alluded to, we do have a lot of surveys we push out to our kids. Um, uh, we also, you know, since Tracy and I started, we thought about how do we connect kids socially and emotionally, right? Because it's important. And so I don't want to be identified as, oh, I came from another state or I came from Haddon or Central Lizzie. I'm an HMS student, right? I don't need to be just a seventh grader. We need to know each other. Um, so we created a, an advisory. This, I believe, is our third year going into it. Um, tomorrow is our first one. I even run one in Tracy, every staff member. And kids are literally randomly assigned to a teacher, um, small groups, and they experience lessons that teach character. Um, they get to know one another. We have caring conversations so kids can respect one another and really truly actively listen and shut everything else off. Um, you know, the, the, the beauty of advisory is I saw a sixth grader and an eighth grader uh, before COVID, um, and I, I, I questioned one of the teachers, why, you know, why did I see your arm? I, how do they even know each other? And they're like, oh, it was from advisory, and the sixth grader is having a bad day today. So it's, it's really forming a connection with someone that they might have not had, have it, had you know, any um, you know, schedule with them. Um, and so what Ms. Matozo displayed is uh, one of our um, surveys that we sent out to kids, what they were most thankful for. Um, it's great to see that a lot of them were thankful for their family and their friends and their health, um, which is new this year. So it's good for them. And it, and it really provides student choice and student voice. That's most important, right? We're not doing our job if we don't allow that for our kids and we want them to be empowered. So um, we look forward to meeting uh, your new, you and your new students and hopefully they feel Feel that voice and that empowerment as well. Did you want me? To, uh, oh, and, and then the cultural responsiveness piece. Um, we went into uh, study halls and some kids accessed uh, the presentations. Uh, one of our presentations was representation in media and literature. So we talked about how, um, you know, TV and literature has changed over time. And you will notice um, that different representation is happening now, which should have happened many, many years ago. And so um, if you take a look at this later, you'll see like what we did with the students. We asked for feedback and then we challenged students to read to an aunt, to a dog. And so you'll see one of our students there that we highlighted. Thank you, Dr. Russo. And I think um, one of the things that's an important takeaway for this evening is, yes, it's a lot of information. And yes, it's a lot of like picking and figuring out, you know, your child's place in this sort of things, but your children have an active voice in all the things that we do. We have students participating on a social studies audit committee. We have students who participated last year on grading policy change. We have uh, our student council peer leaders, um, our student leaders who are ambassadors of our middle school gay straight alliance, our diplomats for diversity, all the different things that our students do, they have a voice in what happens within our school. And that's important because it's their community. Um, it's where they spend three years of their lives. And it's important for us to make sure that we help our students along that way kind of cultivate their voice and their place within the middle school community as a middle schooler, in addition to being a learner and a member of their family and those kinds of things. So something I try to 
figure out for myself um, as we get ready to wrap up the evening. I know it's been a long night and I can see like the numbers slowly dwindling, you know, as parents are, you know, have the information that they need or need some time to process. Um, I'm the oldest of three. So I've had to learn what it really feels like to be a middle child or what middle school feels like between the nurturing elementary and the more independent um, high school. You know, we're in the middle and toggle between those two worlds and it's kind of like a journey through Middle Earth. Again, I'm a former English teacher and a little bit of like a sci-fi nerd, but if you think about the journey that's filled with all these different kinds of things like Lord of the Rings, um, we kind of have to pass through this experience, but as we pass through, we come into contact with so many different things that it's such a, a growing experience. Um, and this was a quote that made sense to me when I tried to conceptualize what it means to really be a middle level learner and a middle school student. Uh, again, um, February 1st to the 5th, families will have access to their Genesis parent portal. You'll be able to see the recommendations that have been made for your child. We'll be sending out the directions so that you know how to access, either if you need a reminder or if this is the first time through, please don't hesitate to call if you need help. We'll be sending out that uh, information to you. And this will be accessible to you tomorrow as well. There are resources here um, for our families, again, to help you conceptualize what it's like to be a sixth grader and a seventh grader from other uh, programs that our other counselors have done. Our program of studies, which outlines and describes all of the courses uh, that are at your child's disposal. Um, our student activities handbook is there and that'll get unpacked a little bit later on in the year. But for our fifth grade families coming into sixth grade or any of our new families or families who are like, I wasn't even sure all the different things that you offer, you know, inside that student activities handbook will give you an outline as well as contact information so that you can see what we do offer um, for our students. And if it's not something that we offer, there are some opportunities for us to pilot some programs so that our students all have a place. Um, the day the crayons quit and I always write back is more of a resource for you to kind of consider maybe what it's like to be a middle schooler. The day the crayons quit is a children's book. You may have it at home. It's something that I keep in my office um, when I have a bad day or when one of the kids will come in and they've kind of like had it. So we kind of go through the different stories within the book and try to kind of understand our feelings and what it is that we need to do. I will always write back as the first book that we started with our One Book, One School summer reading event, uh, something that really rings true to understanding what it means to be a middle schooler um, in a situation where they're understanding the global world and really getting a feel for what it means to be outside um, a little bit differently from what they might be accustomed or used to and, and something that I find myself often going back and looking at the lessons that I learned from that in and of itself. Um, and finally, I think this uh, young lady speaks to what it really means to transition from being an elementary school to being a middle schooler. And you'll have the opportunity to review this at your leisure. It's a TED Talk. We share out lots of TED Talks with our families um, because sometimes other people just say what's going on in our heads a little bit more clearly. And with that, um, I would like to thank you on behalf of the entire faculty and staff of Haddonfield Middle School for being on this journey with us tonight. Uh, some of you started with us at like 6.30 and now it's eight o'clock. For me, I'm like, oh my God, I'm like still up this late. I'm so proud of myself. But at the same time, I think it's also an important endeavor um, that you see us and that you have the opportunity to engage with us and understand that everything that we do is for the benefit of all children. Um, and everyone is, again, on this path a little bit differently than others, and that's okay because it's not competitive education and sometimes it feels like it is. So we treat your children like we treat our own relatives for better or worse. Um, I might hug your kids a little bit more next year when we're allowed to hug because my son will be in college and I have nobody to hug. So there's that. 
but um, thank you for being with us. We appreciate the time that you spent with us. Please take some time to put any thoughts or comments and certainly any questions in the chat. We will save those and review them and we will share out uh, all the presentations that you saw this evening. Uh, take some time to digest and process. Next week will be your opportunity to go in and make some selections and then over, over the course of the next month or so, you know, we'll continue to grow our partnership um, in preparation for your child's start in middle school, which is really exciting. So thank you. And thank you uh, staff um, for being true representatives of the spirit of our school. And we appreciate you being here families. And I can see a couple kids um, as well. So it's nice to see our students too. So thank you again and have a wonderful evening. So thank you. I have to stop touching my hair and my face. I'm like breaking all the rules. Ms. Matozo, can you hit stop recording? Probably.